Hi folks, Roland Martin here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, you know, I don't like to brag, but I have a, a big r a resume of, of tournament success, and, and that's the springboard of opportunity. In other words, all the success I had in winning all the tournaments that I did uh, gave me the credibility to say go into television and go into all these other things. And one thing I do a lot of is I like to do a lot of seminar work right now. I go all over the country and we, we talk about, and my main topic is pattern fishing. Now, inside pattern fishing, there's a lot of different variables of water and cover conditions. And that's what patterns are all based on. If you identify all the water and cover conditions, you can duplicate that particular set of, of circumstances and find other fish. Okay, that's the, the whole premise of this book. Now, this book <laughs> was uh, the second most successful book that uh, Winchester Press ever published. I asked Winchester Press, I said, what was the most successful book? And they said it was a book on bird watching. So evidently there's more bird watchers than there are uh, bass fishermen. But anyway, uh, th this book was a, was a real godsend. Now, of, of, of all the water and cover conditions that I want to talk to you about, I want to just tell you that I've won over $2 million in tournament prize money with pattern fishing. Now, based on today's standards, that's back in the 70s and back in the uh, 80s, and back on today's standards, that's five or six million dollars. That's what uh, uh, Craig Lamb with Bass said, uh, said I would be, Kevin uh, Van Dam and I would be pretty close to the top money winning. Because the, the monies that I won in these tournaments back 30, 40 years ago were five and 10 and 15, 20,000 dollar tournaments. Now they're 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 dollar tournaments. But the point is, credibility. I won tournaments because I could catch fish, because I could put these patterns to, to work. And of all the pattern conditions that I, I want to deal with, today I want to talk about water temperature. Water temperature is the most important of all the things that I do. And now, you know, years ago when, when I was uh, working with the uh, with the with the program, uh, all I had was uh, a, a regular thermometer I'd put in the water. Now we have these digital ones. Aren't these cool? Look at this. It's it's laser. If I put, go right here on this book, for example, see the laser thing? It says the book is uh, it's, the book is 74 degrees. Okay. It says my arm, my arm is 91 degrees right there on the surface of the arm. The wall up there. It's 72, 73 degrees. So, so this, this thermometer is so cool because what I can do, I can go around the lake and find the warmest water or the coolest water or whatever kind of water I'm trying to look for, the preferred water temperature if that is the case. Okay, now I can't go over all the variables of water temperatures in this short period of time, in just a few minutes, but what I can do is right now I can kind of identify What's a good and bad situation for here in Florida for catching a trophy bass? If you want to come down this spring or that right now and catch a trophy lunker bass, a personal best of your life, uh, I can help you with that. Uh, also, I can give you some no-go situations and go situations for, say, wherever you live, Connecticut to California. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to put the book down for just a second. And let's just, uh, let's just make some, some, uh, some, some basic things. Now, I, I majored in, in science and stuff in college, and so that's kind of what I, get, I do. When I came to the tournament trail in the 70s, early 70s, 1970, I had a good background in biology. So I, was, I, had, I had a pH meter, I had an oxygen meter, I had a thermometer, I had all these things to think about the kind to, to, to analyze the water conditions, and that's where I came up with my pattern idea. In fact, I, I got a book right here. Well, the book was published in 80, this map goes back to 1971, and that was where I first discussed all these water and cover conditions that, are, that make a pattern. And that was a 1971 edition on that map at Santee Cooper where I was guiding at the time. But the point is, I've been doing this for a long time. I was old school. I'm kind of an old school guy. Hey, I'm a power fisherman. I go into the shallow water, and where I kind of concentrate my efforts are in the shallow water. Now, shallow waters can, can change, the water temperatures can change far more in shallow water than they can in deep water. Because in shallow water, the winds come from the north. Like right now, it's a cold front. It's January. There's a, a 50 degree water uh, temperature is coming down from the north. What's, what's that going to do? Well, I'll tell you what it's going to do here in Florida. It's going to really mess up some fishing, number one. And what it's going to do, it's going to push the, the, the warmer water is going to cool off and it's going to push cold water to the south shore, this north wind. 
is going to push the colder water to the south and the lake. So if I were going to the headwaters, if I were going to Okeechobee, if I were going to Lake Seminole, all these different lakes that I might fish here in Florida, I want to avoid the south shoreline because the warmer water is going to be at the north shore. Now here, let me tell you about cold fronts. Cold fronts, any time that you have a cold front and the water temperature drops more than five degrees, the fish really kind of react to that. Five degree temperature change, they can tolerate pretty good. 10 degrees, it kind of makes them lethargic. And 15 degrees here in Florida is, is a death toll. I mean, I mean, it really shuts them down. And if you drop 20 degrees of water temperature, if you drop the water temperature right now here in Florida from 70 to 50, you'll catch almost nothing. I mean, that's just the way it is. So what are you trying to do? Well, in my case, I can still find some warmer water. You know, I'm going to try to find the warmest water. If I'm in a tournament competition, it's not how many fish I can catch each and every day. It's how many fish I can catch more than the other guy, okay? So the other guy, if he's spending half his time in the south end of the lake, say where the cold water has piled up, okay, and I'm in the north end of the lake and I'm, fi I'm fishing the warmer water, I'm fine with this uh, laser thermometer I've found that warmer spot, I might catch one or two more fish than he will. It might, might, it might not be as many fish as yesterday, because yesterday was a, a better day and a warmer day. But it's maybe enough to win the tournament. That's the point is, it's all relative to that day, to that day. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to locate fish in that body of water. But people don't realize another thing. They don't realize how much they travel. You know, fish move around just an ex incredible amount of time. There's a favorite spot underneath the boat dock. There's a favorite spot underneath the pile of lily pads, a favorite spot on a certain point. But fish move a lot. About 90-something percent of them just cruise for miles. I'm going to tell you what's a go and go, a no-go situation. I'm, I'm, again, I'm going to give you a lot of information quick, and it's a million-dollar bunch of information. It won me millions of dollars. And that is fish, the warming trends in a cold front situation. When you have a cold front situation, the worst situation is when the water temperature drops. And as it drops, the only chance you have is fishing the warmest water, okay? Say right now the water temperature is 70, and it's going to drop all the way down to, say, uh, 55 degrees tonight on the south shoreline. But the, the north shoreline might be 60 degrees. That's a little bit better. Okay, now there's some things to do at 60 degrees that still can catch fish here in Florida. Your top water is not going to be so hot. Okay, uh, your spinner baits and, and swim baits are going to be kind of mediocre, maybe a chatter bait or two. Your best bet, probably a flipping bite. Now, I, I, I'm a power fisherman. I, you see me with big flipping sticks and, and big crawl worms, and, and I'm going into the, the, the hyacinths. I'm going into the heavy uh, mats of a hydrilla. I'm going into the laid over cane and stuff, and I'm fishing. They're going to seek cover. A lot of heavy cover. I mean, they're going to get in the thickest bush, underneath a bunch of thickest lily pads, under the most big up mat of, of grass and whatever you can find, and they'll bury up in there, and, and, you know, as much as they can. So that's one big deal. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find w rising water temperatures, and particularly I, I, I want to, if the water temperature was 70 to start with, I hate to get much more than 10 degrees lower than that. If I can find water temperatures at least 60, at least I feel better than at 55. 55 degrees after a seven. Now, here's another thing about northern bass. You all say to me, well, I live in uh, Akron, Ohio, and, and, and fish bite really good at 55 degrees. Yeah, you know why? Because your fish, number one, they're not a Florida bass. They're, they're a northern bass, that's, that's number one. And number two, they're acclimated to that, that 55 degrees. They've been sitting around 55 degrees the, the whole winter. In fact, it might be a warm day for them. It might have been 50 degrees last week, so it might be a warming to 55 degrees. It might have been actually colder, and then now it's warm to 55. Where, so it's, as it's warming, it's always better than when it's falling. So, so anyway, that's, that's just a couple of little parameters. You know, there's, I can go into a lot more uh, detail on, on what to look for, but another thing that, that you might th consider, in, and that is in, when you come to Florida, what you want to do is you want to kind of gear around the spawning season. The biggest bass of the year spawn a little teeny bit in November, just a tad, and a little teeny bit in December, just a tad, but they, they bit, bit a little bit last month. And they're starting to kind of bit a little bit this month, but the problem with January, there's a lot of cold fronts that knock them off the spawn. They, they'll spawn when it's about 70 degrees, 
and then as it drops to 60 degrees, it knocks them off the spawn, and that's what's happening right now. It's knocking them off whatever spawn they're on. There's a little small spawn going on at, at uh, headwaters. In fact, I was over there last week. And we caught an eight-pound bass plus on the last about four days out there, but these are pre-spawn bass, or one of them was a spawner bass. But anyway, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to couple up r rising water temperature with a couple days before the full moon or the new moon. Now, February is a great month. I mean, if you're talking about a way to catch a monster bass in February, my heavens, son, you can, go to, you, can, you can come down here in February and you can find fish if you have the warming trend and the water temperatures around 70 and rising temperatures about three or four days before the full moon. Uh, four, three or four days before the new moon is another good time. I'm trying to pinpoint time. Now, here's another thing to consider, and that's wind. And that is, with all these cold fronts that come ripping through, the weather forecast will sometimes tell you what the wind forecast is. Now, what you want to do, a little wind's fine, but a lot of wind, let me tell you what a lot of wind does. And it's a kind of a no-go situation. When, when it, like at Okeechobee, for example, if there's a nice spawning area, for example, and their fish have all moved in and they're all really all active and they're really going, and a big wind hits and it dingies and muddies the water up, boom. You're out of business. You got to find that clear water. You got to find that warm, clear water. Okay, so but that so that Okeechobee, it really is debilitating. Now these smaller lakes, it's not so bad. Headwaters is not so bad because headwaters, where I guide so much now, is a lot of grass, and so it doesn't get real muddy because it's it's so clear most of the time. So the wind doesn't bother you quite as bad. But on these big open lakes like Kissimmee, and Istapoga, and 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 uh, of course uh, Okeechobee. Wind is a huge consideration, so you got to kind of watch your weather for that. Now, I've just told you a little bit about <clears throat> what's going on with, with, uh, with water temperature. There's a lot more to water temperature. Water temperature is, a, is, just, a, is just a massive amount of things that are going on. But again, I'm a pattern fisherman. I'm looking for that exact set of water and cover conditions, things like temperature, things like water clarity, things like water depth, like the structure of the water, like the cover and grass and, and drop-offs in the, in the vicinity of the fish I'm fishing. And once you find and identify these features where you've caught a fish, you duplicate it. Hey, that's so simple enough. That's what pattern fishing is. You duplicate the successful thing that you've found. And you just have to analyze all, this, all, the, all the stuff in the water. Everything is happening. But the most important of all, the $2 million deal for me, finding that good water temperature and really paying attention to that. That'll help you out more than anything. Get yourself a good digital thermometer. This only costs $28, which is fantastic. It just, it just does great. It just, just, I mean, I don't know what this phone is right now, but look, that thing says 76 degrees, whatever. I don't know, it, it just tells you the water temperature right away. So you can't beat this thing. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> you'll have a good time uh, looking for that warmer water in the, in the cold front situation. In the summertime, it might be the opposite. And in California, Connecticut might be different. I'm, I'm giving you the, the heads up, though, on Florida. If you want to catch a big trying trophy bass, hey, heed what I say about the rising water temperatures. Heed what I say about, about the, the, uh, the full moon cycles as well. And you catch yourself a giant trophy bass. Hey, we'll see you again soon. Hey, thanks for watching.